Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. See, y'all know my slogan. Life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I got a beautiful Black Lion game that one of my students uh, personally played against uh, a, an opponent that was higher rated than he was. Uh, it, it, it definitely went down, guys. This was definitely a beautiful game. So, shout outs to Randy, man. Uh, he definitely uh, put in the work, guys. Even with his busy schedule at work, he still took the time to look at the black line, you know, study it, you know, just going through my course and everything, and, you know, he dominated uh, his opponent with the black lion. So, again, shout outs to Randy, man. Uh, this is, uh, this was definitely a beautiful um, black lion game. All right. So, without further ado, we actually going to get started right now. All right, guys. So, uh, um, Randy played as um, Ragman uh, 63, and he played against uh, Iago Boris, who was a 1438. All right. So um, e4, d6, d4, knight b to d7, knight f3, a6, knight c3, c6, bishop b2, knight f6, bishop b3, queen c7, uh, white castle kingside, and then e5. All right. So as y'all can see here um, with e5, you know, uh, the queen on c7 is overprotecting the uh, e5 pawn. Uh, it's definitely very solid. Um, the queen goes to d2. Uh, I think a lot of this is uh, a little bit passive. I don't think white understand exactly what's about to go on. Um, this would be a, a good position to have if black was going to castle kingside. Um, in that case, uh, it, everything gets reversed because uh, it almost seems like he's, um, black is going to castle, but he's really not. And a lot of people all uh, get mixed up with that. Um, but yeah, bishop b7 is played. Uh, he goes rook d1. Maybe he's trying to control the d file or whatever. Uh, but uh, I think when you're going to play against the black line, you got to really mess up the pawn structure. You got to move b4, a4, uh, maybe get the c4 pawn down there and go c5 to really mess up the position. Uh, in this, I just I just really believe uh, out of my experience of playing a black line, uh, when they have these type of setups, white usually always lose because they don't really get the concept of, you know, black's idea. Um, so, uh, G5, uh, Randy played this one, very great. And then H3. And again, this almost like, I want to say it almost kind of loses only due to the fact that, you know, uh, when, when black plays G5 and then white plays H3, Obviously, uh, H3 is played out of fear due to uh, G4. Um, and, and that's usually how it usually always goes down. Uh, but uh, Knight F8 is played. Uh, the move would have been uh, Knight H2, which probably should be uh, a move that uh, White should have played. But he doesn't. He does a Bishop uh, C4. And I think this Bishop is... Um, if he would have played this in the beginning of the game and everything, and maybe get some queen side uh, expansion going, maybe it would have been a little bit different. But I feel like this bishop c4 is kind of a waste of move now, uh, which is why black goes knight g6. All black is doing is just going with his um, plan. It's like it ain't nothing. Black, the black line is kind of like looking at his opponent, like, okay, what are you doing? Like, do you not know I'm vicious? Do you not know I'm a beast? Like. Dog, I'm about to, like, really get you right now, you know? So, and that's what, literally what the black line is doing right now. So, A4 is played, and then A5. Black actually stops any queenside expansion uh, for white. You know, black puts a stop to it. Um, there's really nothing that white can really do. He just really puts a stop to everything. Um, B3 is played, too passive. Uh, Rook G8, okay. Um, Randy, this this was a definitely a great move uh, with the Rook G8. You know, getting that G file in, you know, also getting ready to go knight f4. This is just so beautiful, man. So beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, G3, which was a mistake on White's um, part, uh, in which um, this h3 pawn is undefended, which is why Randy actually took the, uh, takes the pawn on h3. Again, this is just something that I probably would resign uh, automatically at because this is just, this is just horrendous, man. This is just. This is just crazy right now. So Bishop catches ace three, uh, rookie one, uh, knight ace five is played. Uh, again, uh, he ran, the crazy part is Randy could have just did knight f4 if he wanted to. 
But again, knight h5 is not bad at all because you still want to get the f4 move anyway, uh, which is uh, pretty crazy. Uh, another thing I was looking at is maybe white could have just did bishop h3. But if he does bishop h3, uh, it doesn't really matter because black queen does have queen c8 coming in. And that just makes it even more deadlier, uh, which is crazy. And then maybe queen e2. The whole purpose is uh, if if I take, then the queen could take guarding this um, light square area. Uh, but obviously, guys, uh, if this was to happen, uh, obviously, I wouldn't actually take um, the light square bishop right away. I was just too busy, you know, um, getting my knight on f4 and trying not to take anything. Uh, that's just me. But, but yeah, it doesn't go down like that. You know, it doesn't go down like that. After bishop captures h3 and knight h5, uh, he goes d5. Uh, his opponent goes d5, and then uh, Randy hit him with knight f4. Beautiful move. Very beautiful move. I love it, man. Uh, and I'm I'm just it's just crazy like that was the worst thing that his opponent could have did is is take this knight. I was like what? So he takes G catches F four. Uh, the dark square bishop is definitely uh, trapped. Uh, it's nothing that he could really do. Uh, honestly, if I was the, my opponent, uh, yeah, I I, I would have resigned. But maybe going bishop B six just to prevent the um, you know just kind of prevent the. I mean, it don't even matter. I mean, this is just so nasty. This is just a nat. Man, this is a nasty game. I'm gonna tell you, this is just so nasty. But his opponent uh, actually goes um, bishop catches f4, which makes it even worse. Knight catches f4 check. And again, like I always tell y'all, if y'all have three or more pieces surrounding the um, the white king or just a king in general, you know you definitely have a mating pattern coming up, and uh, you may have a tactic or a strong advantage over your opponent where you're going to win. So after this uh, check, King H2, and Randy does a, a very beautiful move, Queen C8. It looks like a silent move, but it's a very, very deadly move. Uh, and the reason being is after Queen C8, uh, his opponent goes D capture C6. Randy just ignores all of that and goes Queen G4, threatening checkmate, right? So Rook G1, Bishop G2, and then what happens? What does uh, White do? Well, white plays uh, knight h4, uh, in which um, it really doesn't matter what he does because he just loses. Uh, queen uh, h5 or h3 uh, is checkmate. Uh, a very, very beautiful uh, checkmate. Uh, this was uh, pretty nasty. Uh, again, man, this was a very great game from uh, Randy. Uh, shout out to him, man. Definitely uh, an awesome, awesome game. For real. Definitely an awesome game. All right, um, but yeah, guys. So again, guys, if y'all want to learn how to play this um Black Lion game, you know, don't hesitate to go into the Maurice Bishop Chess University and then get yourself enrolled, guys. It's very affordable. Uh, it's not just me giving you just a video course, guys. You get my actual private study forum, which is literally all my notations in that forum. As well as, guys, you actually could get in contact with me personally. You know, me just guiding you through um, the moves that you need to make. You know, things that you need to look at. You know, um, getting you to actually think even um, smarter. Think it's smarter and not harder. You know, and really help y'all to really understand. This is what I'm all about, guys. So, again, guys, you want to be one of the students to actually show, like, a, you know, how you're playing, like, the strong game. And you're just beating opponents, even stronger opponents. You know, um, this is what it's all about, guys, and, and I'm here for y'all. So, uh, again, if you have not enrolled, definitely uh, get yourself enrolled uh, into Maurice Bishop Chess University, and uh, definitely um, check it out. All right, guys, we're going to go to the next game, guys, uh, which is uh, one that I play, uh, which is the smith Moore Gambit. Believe it or not, a fun fact for y'all, um, the Smith Moral Gambit is one of the uh, reasons why I became the three time Greater Philadelphia chess champion, literally, guys, and the Pennsylvania Junior Invitational Champion as well. Um, for me playing the Smith Moral Gambit, uh, that's what that was actually the first gambit that I was playing before I played the Wing Gambit. So, yeah, so I'm gonna actually show y'all all uh, this game that I played against the 2551. All right, and yes, guys, this was a bullet game, but uh, yeah, it, it was pretty crazy though. 
But um, e4, c5, d4, uh, c catcher d4, c3, uh, d catcher c3, and then knight catcher c3. All right. So um, after d6, I go knight f3. And this is pretty much all book, guys, uh, with knight f3. Uh, e6, bishop c4. Uh, again, the whole point of this opening is we want fast development, and I want to go queen e2, castle king side, and then bring a rook to the d file, um, bring a bishop on f4, and rook on c1, which is what I want to do. So, queen e2, a6, castle king side, b5, bishop b3, which I didn't really care, uh, which, you know, um, black is going to always go b5, but... In retrospect, guys, uh, there, there are reasons why uh, black may go b5, but also white can also capitalize sometimes uh, on a c6 square. Even though the knight is here now, but eventually, you know, you could capitalize on it. But that's in some games. But in this game, you're not going to really see because, um, again, my opponent is pretty strong. So he played it pretty well. But bishop b3, um, rook a7. Now, this is one of those type of openings that. I can never get to play in a tournament, but I always study for it because I always believe that somebody will play this on me. But out of all of my tournaments that I played the Smith Morrow Gambit, I never had nobody play this actual line until now, right? And because I used to study this opening so much, like I to this day I still remember the lines of um how to play against it. So which is why I was pretty uh happy with it, you know. So um I go rook d1, and the whole purpose of rook a7, guys, is for black to go rook d7, which is a solid defense. It almost reminds me of a, a Petrosian type of defense. Really boring, but a very solid defense. Uh, it actually unpins the queen, um, you know, with the pin or with the rook on the, uh, hitting the d-point. Uh, but having the rook on d7, it, it, it's pretty solid. Uh, the only thing is, I feel as though white gets a advantage in this due to the fact that black has two matter pieces that's not developed. Whereas after this bishop f4 move, it seems like all my pieces, really all my pieces are developed except for my rook, uh, which is still on um, the a, a square. Uh, so bishop b7 is played, then um, rook a c1. Uh, a6, and I go h3. And the whole point of h3, guys, is when he goes knight f6, if he decides to go knight h5, uh, I have uh, an h2 square that I can actually go to. Because this dark square bishop is definitely um, becomes a weapon. And it becomes very dangerous. And you're going to see why this dark square bishop becomes very dangerous. Uh, so knight f6 is played. Not a problem. And I go e5. So again, guys, with the smith moral game, where you're gonna, if you're going to play the smith moral game, you got to be very aggressive. You got to be like an attacking player. Like You got to really like be aggressive in everything that you do. Which is why I immediately push the e5 pawn. Uh, he takes, I take, and then rook catches d1, rook catches d1. And now I have the d file. So I have the d file now. And um, this is going to be later uh, pretty bad for black because he gave me the d file. And by me having this d file, it, it, it's going to become very hard for um, black to really do anything. Especially because of the fact that the black king is still in the center of the board. He still has a bishop on f8 that's not developed. And also, he has a rook on h8 that's not developed. And the fact that black is going to have a hard time castling, in which you're going to see why. So, uh, queen c8 is played, and I played knight g6. Look at that. Uh, why knight g6? Well, if uh, if f captures g6, I have to move um, bishop captures e6. Now, the reason why this... Um, this move is so, or, or the reason why taking the knight is so dangerous because after the bishop catches e6, again, the king is still in the center of the board, you know, as you see. And then my bishop is hitting the queen. Obviously, guys, the queen cannot come to this uh, area due to the rook on the d file. The queen cannot go to c7 due to the um, bishop on, um, you know, on, you know, controlling the dark squares. Uh, if for some reason, um, queen c8, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty, um, crazy uh i'm sorry not this move um bishop d7 um bishop d7 would be a good move due to the fact that there's a double check where the king has to move somewhere right so if he goes king f7 i have to move queen e6 checkmate uh if he decides to go um king d8 uh i do have to move um bishop captures uh c8 or c6 
whereas I'm checking on um, with the rook. And if uh, king c8, I have queen e6, uh, which is also, uh, it would be checkmate, but the knight has to move here. That's the only way he can block it, but then it's checkmate after that. So yeah, it's um, pretty nasty, guys, for real. But that's what happens if he actually takes. So uh, after knight g6, my opponent doesn't take. He goes rook d8, and I decide to take his dark square bishop. Now this becomes an issue now, guys, because the king is still in the center of the board. The rook captures. And remember, I told you the bishop on f4 is very, very dangerous. Uh, this is the reason why uh, bishop d6 is here. All right. So after bishop d6, I'm hitting the rook. He goes rook g8. And black has some dark square weaknesses now. And this annoying dark square bishop sitting on a dark square. So now that I'm controlling these um, dark squares, now I need to get some other piece to control the dark square. So my plan is, how can I do that? Well, my plan is, I'm going to just go queen d3. Why do I go queen d3? Because I want to be able to go queen g3 in order to put some more pressure on the dark squares. Because if I could get my queen on g7, I can be able to control some dark squares to the point maybe I can checkmate them on e7. Obviously, the knight is here, but I'll have to get the knight out the way first, right? But anytime you have something like that, you want to put more pressure on the, the restricted dark squares, all right? So knight a5 is played, uh, in which he's attacking my light square bishop. So I go queen g3. As y'all can see, I am getting ready to hit uh, the g7 pawn. If the knight decides to take on my bishop, I have queen captures g7, in which I'm hitting uh, the rook. And I'm hitting the knight as well. If rook g8, I do have queen captures um, f6. Uh, if rook captures g2 check, I could go king f1. If king uh, queen c4, I have knight e2. And white is fine. And white is more than fine because right now, uh, the knight on b3 is still undefended. And of course, uh, black is about to get checkmated with uh, queen e7. If y'all actually use y'all uh, engine, the engine would tell you that black best move is queen h4 due to uh, trying to stop the mate on e7. So, uh, but yeah, that's the reason being. All right. So, after uh, queen g3, my opponent couldn't take my bishop due to this is uh, very strong. So, rook g8 is played, and then I go bishop c2. All right. Because I need that uh, active light square bishop, it's very strong. Uh, I need that. And also, I guard the uh, the e4 square as well, as y'all can see. All right. So, uh, knight c4 is played, and um, I go bishop c7. And I go bishop c7 because, guys, this is an active dark square bishop. The rule of thumb is if you have an active um, piece uh, that's preventing your king from, or preventing your opponent's king from escaping, you know, you don't want to give that piece up. You know, it, it's very irritating for your opponent, and it gives you a big advantage. So, that's why I didn't. Um, do, uh, give up the dark square bishop. Uh, knight d5 is played. Uh, just for all that's probably wondering, what about knight h5? If I go knight h, or if he goes knight h5, I have queen h2, and now this um dumb knight is stuck on a rim, and it's just looking stupid right now. So eventually he's gonna have to go back to knight f6. So it's not a good look. Which is why my opponent played knight d5. So this was a no-brainer for me. I go knight catcher d5. Bishop catches d5, and then I hit my opponent with b3. Rule of thumb, guys, if you have an opponent that's on a very, very nice post, you need to immediately uh, get them out. It's almost like having poison um, in your blood, right? You know, getting poison in your blood. Um, the, the solution is you need to get the poison out of your blood as soon as possible. Why? Because if you leave the poison in your blood for a long period of time, it will start to spread in your bloodstream. And eventually you will die. Just because you know, guys, life is a game of chess. So I got to give you life, um, real life scenarios. So same thing with chess. If you have an opponent that's literally stuck on that post, you know, and definitely if this is your enemy, and you if your enemy is staying in your area for a long time, then eventually he gonna find a lot of weaknesses in your position just by staying there for a very long amount of time, observing your every move, your position, and then eventually, um. He'll catch you where uh, you at least suspect it. So that's why you have to move this um, piece as fast as possible. All right. So that's what I do. I go B3 to remove him as fast as possible. Uh, like I said, guys, it's like the enemy. It's like an enemy that's trying to destroy me and everything. I'm going to remove him out the premises as soon as, pos as possible. 
So I need to have that same mindset, guys, like a real life scenario. Because when you think like that, guys, you'll see that literally real life scenarios is actually placed on the chessboard and you'll start to react a certain way. All right. So knight a3 and then bishop f5. I go bishop f5 because, again, if he goes e catches f5, I have rook catches d5. Because the thing is, if I could take his light square bishop, uh, I am golden due to the fact that, you know, um, he won't be able to defend as seven squares or any light squares he won't be able to defend. And it's just very great on me. And the king will be all the way open and I have queen e5 check and then threatening rook d8, which is a problem. All right. So bishop f5, uh, my opponent goes g6. And what do you think I hit my opponent with? Yes, guys. I hit my opponent with rook catchers d5. Why this move? Because if g catches f5, I just win a free rook. And of course, the king cannot go to here due to uh, I'm going to win his queen. All right. Uh, my opponent actually takes on the bishop. You know, uh, he, takes, he takes on the bishop. Now, you're probably wondering... Why not e captures d5? If he goes e captures d5, as y'all see, the bishop will take um, the queen. All right. So, which is why my opponent plays e captures f5, and I go queen e5 check. Queen e6, rook d8 check, king e7, and then you would think that, oh, I'm probably just going to take the queen and take the rook. Very tempting at first, but guys, you always got to get in the habit of looking for better moves. Always look for better moves. When you look for better moves, things start to happen. So I go queen, c5, check. I look for where the king can go at, you know, make sure that he doesn't escape. He can't go no nowhere here because the rook is here. Uh, so the only move that uh, black could go is king f6. Uh, I go queen, d4, uh, check. And, uh, and this is the best move for me because now if he goes back to king e7, now I can actually take the rook now without him taking, you know, um, you know, because guys, I want my queen on the board and I still because I didn't want to really exchange the queen and then take his rook. I want to make it as easier as possible for me. But if he went back to king e7, I could take his rook and now I'm threatening uh, checkmate with bishop d8 or uh, queen d8 as well, which is uh, winning for white. All right. So after queen d4 check. Uh, obviously, he sees that, so uh, he goes king g5, and I go bishop f4. Again, I'm bringing him further in because the queen is guarding uh, this dark square of weaknesses, and uh, I'm restricting the king from getting back to this uh, square. Uh, after bishop f4, the king can't go g4 because they h3 pawn, so he got one move to go, h5. What else do you think I do, guys? I go queen d1 check. So beautiful, right? Uh, king h4, and then uh, I go king h2. And as you can see, there's really nothing that he can do to stop this mate at all. Which is why my opponent goes queen e2. I take, he goes g5, trying to escape, and I hit him with g3, checkmate, guys. And that's how the Smith Mora comes into play, guys. The Smith Mora is definitely that game, guys. Again, I will be. Um, doing a course on the smith more gambit where y'all can um you know if y'all want some weapons for the sicilian uh for the sicilian players you know i would definitely give that to y'all so it definitely will be soon again i get busy with work in the military you know uh it gets pretty hectic pretty crazy all right but again guys for all y'all that's not enrolled in the maurice bishop chess university make sure you get yourself enrolled in guys so you can start attacking you know, and winning more chess games, guys, and also uh, where y'all can personally get in contact with me to actually talk about things that you want to play or how you want to get better, you know, or any questions that you have with your games and everything, you can always share your games with me and I can always put y'all in the right direction. And it's not just me, um, you know, giving y'all a course and just leaving you high and dry. No, guys, you have me. Uh, I'm here to help. As always, you can, you can ask all my students, guys, you know, they, they know how I am. They know how I be. You know, I, I'm, I'm human just like y'all human. I bleed just like y'all bleed. I breathe just like y'all breathe. I breathe the same oxygen y'all breathe. So, uh, simple as that. But again, guys, um, if you really enjoyed this um, video and if you really enjoyed this comment or this um, this video, uh, definitely like, share, comment. Let me know what you think. And also, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because, guys, if you're not subscribing to my channel, then 
What are you doing? <laughs> All right, guys. Peace.